Sandy here and welcome back to another video for Brutus Monroe. Now I am excited to be creating this layout today. I am doing uh, these two photos from Santa Cruz. I've already uh, stamped and fussy cut out two of the stamp sets from the June uh, release. I'm also going to bring in the May uh, stamp set with this roller coaster uh, kind of background because I have the roller coaster here in the background. And then I got this stamp set, the Bold Alphabet Uppercase Fill for my birthday. My husband uh, bought it for me. So I'm gonna use this for my title. And then of course, I'm gonna bring in a little bit of mixed media. So let's see what I can do. The first thing I did was gut this beautiful, beautiful dotted paper. Now these blue dots are textured. So you can rub your fingers over them and it's got this great texture and it's not just color printed on color. So I thought that that was, you know, important to show off a good amount. So I did gut that paper so I can use the center of it for another project. And then I have this white paper. Uh, it's just some white cardstock that I am going to use some aqua pigments on. So I have uh, pretty much a rainbow uh, throughout my entire uh, paint palette here um, but I'm not using the rainbow I'm just going to use a couple of blues and that is because my pictures are of Santa Cruz and it's definitely a blue type of feeling with the water and the beach and all that kind of stuff so I did use three different blues and I just used my brush to go across the page I did not want to blend in the brush strokes. I just put it straight across there and that is going to give me a background. And the beautiful thing about using aqua pigments is if you don't have the exact right color paper or you want something that has uh, a mixed media look or you just need, you know, you need something fun, something that looks like has some texture, then you can use these aqua pigments and you can create your own uh, pages like I have done here. There are so many options to do that with. Now this stencil that I'm using is actually the sequin builder stencil, but I think it makes a great stencil uh, just to put some nice mixed media through it like this glitter glaze. So I am doing this directly on top of my aqua pigmented layout and I'm not putting the glitter glaze throughout the entire stencil because I know that this is going to be behind my photo. So it's just going to uh, be like an outline around my photo. So I'm just holding up the photos to try to kind of figure out where I need to put uh, my glitter glaze because you know, glitter glaze is a hot commodity and I don't wanna waste it. I love, love, love me some glitter glaze. It makes me ridiculously happy ridiculously happy you guys so I'm just going to go ahead I get that down uh, on top of my paper I had to do a little bit of cleanup because I had a little bit of a smudge so we went ahead and did that and that is off to dry now I do grab my uh, large misty here and I am making a complete and utter mess you guys though let me let me just lay this out for you I love heat embossing I love the magic of watching the dry little crystal granules, whatever you want to call them, melt into something smooth and shiny and melt it. Like I think embossing is absolute magic. Magic, okay? I love it. I have been embossing for years. I mean years, people. And I'm a slob. I just, I just cannot get my act together so that my embossing looks good. Like I like look look at that mess. Look what I mess. I, like I just dumped it right on. I don't know what it is. I I just don't know. I, I think I have a block where when it comes to embossing, I'm just going to be a slob about it, and I'm okay with that. Now I was thinking to go ahead and use the stamping platform with this, but it turned out to be quicker not to, and then it also turned out to be quicker just to stamp all the way across and emboss it all at the end, which is what I'm doing right here. Now I did use a paintbrush to kind of um, wipe off some of the embossing powder that, that didn't make it look like the roller coaster uh, things were all the way across. I am going to go ahead and fussy cut this and I'm just doing a quick and easy fussy cut uh, around the top of the roller coaster where 
the uh, crests and valleys are. So now I have this complete roller coaster that I'm going to use as a border across my page. So now we got to get everything uh, put together. I figured I needed some sort of a uh, bit of photo mat for my photos. So I grabbed this. This is from the watercolor galaxy background uh, paper pack. So I went ahead and pulled out two sheets that were the same. I just trimmed down my photos so that I could use my four by six photos on a six by six paper pad because that little bit that I cut off of my photos is not, nothing, nothing is missing, okay? So I don't mind trimming down my photos because nothing is missing there. Now I am going to washi the back of this layout uh, because I like all of my things on the back to be nice and smooth because when I'm pulling them in and out of page protectors and moving them about on my album, um, I, don't, I don't want anything snagging and ripping in and ruining pages. So that is why we do that. Now I am going to go ahead and put that roller coaster down as a border under here. Uh, where my photos are and then I'm just trying to figure out where I'm going to put these stamped images and I pick the sandcastle and this little mermaid girl because I think that it looks cool. I like the sandcastle kind of like in the foreground here and it's going to give a little bit of weight and then I also am going to um, cut out the stamped words and instead of um, leaving it as one sentiment that is stamped together, I trim it down so that it is on two strips. And that is a great thing about uh, word sentiment stamp sets like this. You can either cut your stamp directly and move your words around and have different sentiments, uh, or you could stamp on the paper and cut it out as the paper. Now I am going to grab some more aqua pigments here and I'm just going to go ahead and color it in with a water brush. So I do use uh, a little bit of, a little, a little, how do I put this? I use a little bit too much uh, wetness on this. So these were not done on watercolor paper. This is just regular uh, cheap white cardstock. So the, the ink, the, the aqua pigment ink, does kind of soak in a little bit and it's more like painting than watercoloring but I'm okay with that uh, I, I I'm okay with that if I wanted it to truly be watercolory I could have stamped it on a watercolor paper uh, and and kind of not did such a tight fussy cutting around it and it could have had a cool watercolor effect but I decide not to go that way now I did want to kind of have my mermaid almost match my photo matte paper. So I created my own little color here in the center and I'm just coloring in her tail and I love the color of it. I could probably never create it again in a million years, but I do love the color of it. I am giving my mermaid brown hair because I have brown hair. Um, usually if I'm, if I'm coloring somebody, uh, I usually make them look like me. And I have brown hair, so there is that. I, I don't have a mermaid tail though, but if I did, it would be purple. We're just gonna throw that out there. That might seem a little bit weird, but that's just the way it is. So I am going to uh, give her uh, shells or bra top or bikini top or whatever the heck she's wearing uh, a little bit of color as well. And then her starfish and her hair are just going to be a nice uh, little yellow color. Fun fact, I actually picked up starfish uh, from the ocean while I was in the Dominican Republic. It was super awesome. If you ever get the chance to go touch starfish and do that kind of thing, go do it because it is, it is an amazing experience. So I am going to go ahead and glue that down. And it is a little bit tough to glue down the flat paper over top of the glitter glaze. So I just use some liquid adhesive on that just to give it a little bit more stick. Now I wanted to give my sandcastle and my little mermaid girl here a little bit of pop. So I am going to use some foam squares. Now this is where you can see that the wetness has gone through the sandcastle and it's still damp 
And my foam squares are having a heck of a time, heck of a time staying stuck. We eventually get that figured out though. So I pop the foam squares down and we get the sand castle down here on the left side of the page. And then my little mermaid chick, she is going to be over here on the right. And I actually cover up some random dude that's sitting, or I don't know if he's sitting or standing over here by the sign. And I mean, I was frustrated because I waited a long time to get a good shot of that sign. And then I finally get it and this dude walks in and I'm like, are you kidding me? So I figured I could just edit him out. And uh, it's much easier to just cover him up with a mermaid than to edit him out. So that's what we did. Now this is the stamp set. My favorite uh, Brutus Monroe stamp set is actually the lowercase version of the stamp set. I am quickly liking the uppercase though. Now I am going to spell out Santa Cruz on here and this is where I decide to pull out my stamping tool again. And it is a good thing I do because I need to stamp these multiple times uh, to get them to have a good full amount of black ink where I want it. Uh, and that is because I am stamping over top of a piece of paper that has watercolor on it and we're just trying to, you know, make it, make it all good. Uh, so I am using my Brutus Monroe Raven Detail Ink. It is my favorite black ink. Um, I have definitely been a convert. I feel like it is just a great black ink. My ink pad actually feels like it's a, a little bit dry. I have another ink pad. Uh, instead of buying the reinker like a smart person, um, I actually bought another ink pad. So I do have that and I'm just making sure to wipe the ink off of my lid of my stamping tool so that it does not uh, go onto my photo or any other part of the layout that I don't want it to go on. And then as they are filling up and blackening uh, quite well, I pull off some of the letters and I'm just making sure that those letters are the ones that I need. And then I'm like, yes, it works great. So that is going to be the title. It is going to say Santa Cruz. And that is going to do it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will have some links down below so you can check out all of the products. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell so you'll get notifications, and I will see you guys again real soon for another video.